Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts. Sorry we haven't been around. It's been uh, super hot here in Massachusetts. It's just been dreadful. I don't know how anybody can live down south without air conditioning. I, I, I just couldn't take it. So it puts you to sleep. It cuts down your energy level. And, uh, but we've been busy. We've been doing a lot of stuff. And uh, we started this uh, Porsche Dash for a 550 Porsche. Uh, probably three months ago or something, I, I did this piece here. <clears throat> and it's pretty finished except for right here. This radius has got to be tuned up a little bit. Uh, this was a dash that was made by uh, Bruce Kimmins. I think he's originally from New Zealand, but he lives in uh, Lake Havasu, uh, Arizona. And uh, he's a, a master shaper. He did a beautiful job. My friend Adam uh, is building a replica 550 and uh, we didn't have the information for the dash and Bruce has done uh, a lot of work on a, a several of these 550s and while in his possession he reverse engineered almost the whole car so from what I understand I don't know it personally but I've been told that he has a lot of, uh, of bucks that he's made and fixtures to make all these 550 parts. He also does uh, uh, Cobra bodies uh, and uh, he stays pretty busy making 550 stuff and Cobra bodies. So Adam purchased this and he's going to be using it in his replica and I'm building a replica as well and I didn't have the information so now I've got much better information being able to copy, uh, which is now Adam's dash. So Mark had made these flexible shape patterns and gauges uh, months ago, and this car is only going to be here for so long, so hopefully I can capture a lot of this information and make versions of it for myself, and then I can therefore make more versions of it if I need to. So these are all the gauges, and we did that panel about two or three months ago, and tonight we'll start on this panel. I don't think we'll finish it, but um, you can see what's happening here is it's a pretty flat panel except for this bulge for the instrument cluster. And if you use a ruler, the ruler, a uh, 24 inch or a 12 uh, inch ruler is one of the best tools that you'll have. It'll tell you the story of what's happening to the surfaces. So we put that like that and you can see that that ruler is touching until it starts to waterfall over this way. So it's pretty flat all the way through here. You can see it. Then right in here you can see there's a hollow there. And oftentimes when you see a hollow like that you think, oh boy, there's a reverse curve. But then you go this way and it's hollow too. So what's happening here actually is it's got a, a standard compound, not a reverse, but it's backwards, it's upside down. So apparently uh, when they design this 550, they've got this flat and then it goes into a little uh, concave compound in here, but it's, it's, a, it's a standard, but it's just upside down. It's not really a reverse curve. And then it starts to flow into the fender here. So if you see on this edge, you actually have a rock going this way. And it's pretty straight right here. So there's a little bit of roll going on here. So there's no compound here. It's just a roll. And then this dash comes up over and then goes this way here. But we're going to break it and put a weld right there. We'll make this little underneath skirt as a separate piece and then weld it right in the middle. Uh, we'll probably make a, uh, a little 3-8 steel hammer form and, and tune that up and then weld that and it'll come out perfect. So, Mark uh, took the flexible shape pattern and we made a paper pattern off of this with the allowances that we need. And this here cutout this is a good thing, is when, when you're working with a panel like this that has a cutout, generally don't make that cutout until you need to cut that out. So I had Mark ignore that cutout because it becomes a pain when you're trying to wheel across and you've got this void right here. So we can cut that out at any time. 
So first thing we want to do is see what, what, what part of this we're going to work on. We've got a standard compound curve here where the instrument cluster bulges. And you know, you got rock going this way and rock going this way. And we have a valley. Now we've marked a valley and that's, that's a really important feature to make sure that, that that's the foothills or where that standard compound curve starts to uh, gain an altitude there. And then over here, this roll that comes over here, this has a ton of stretch. Just like that side, we had a stretch like crazy. This needs a lot of stretching. You can see it right there. There's a lot of extra material right here. So we've got that plotted where that radius has to be. So that radius and that hump are the main features. And then there's just a few little subtleties. So it's a complex part, but on a one to 10 scale, I'd probably put it at like a seven or so. It's not uh, super difficult, but it's a fun one. And uh, we got 050 aluminum. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pound this up. We don't have to anneal it, I don't think. We'll find out. Um, Usually 050 will move. That 060 I use is really tough stuff, and I, I generally will anneal that now. So we might anneal this. This would make it a lot easier if I anneal this section. I might just spot anneal that. This doesn't need to be annealed at all. It's just going to have a little light wheeling on it. So let's pop this up a little bit right here. We'll get the beta bag over in position and mock and film into it. All right, I put the uh, flexible shape pattern on here, and uh, this gives me the location of exactly where I need to strike that. And I uh, mark the, the valley where it starts to make the transition into that hill. And uh, we're going to mark that valley location right now as best we can. I want to thank everybody for the continued support. Even though we haven't been doing videos, we've been getting a lot of new uh, subscribers. And uh, please uh, uh, remember to subscribe if you're new. And uh, the channel is doing okay, I guess, for not having any videos in like two weeks. So uh, hopefully we can remedy that now that the temperatures got a little bit better. Uh, had a couple classes. Mark can show a little bit of the progress we did. Uh, Maserati uh, 300S tail end. I had a, a, a young student who was 18 years old and I had him shape these three panels here. This internal fender piece, the external fender piece, and this rear body section. Now I had these all done previously by students in steel in 20 gauge. So we made flexible shape patterns off of it and he had no experience, AJ, he was 18, and he made these panels. Uh, this pit panel here, it, which looks exceptional right now, had a few ripples in it and a few overdeveloped spots. I had to shrink it back. I did tune this up a little bit, but uh, this is a AJ's panel, the first panel he ever made. He did a wonderful job on it. This one, which is a really difficult reverse curve panel, um, there were a few problems. The, the one that was in there was a little overdeveloped and we made a flexible shape pattern and, and he overdeveloped it a little bit more and it needs to, it, I had to shrink it back. It still needs a little cleanup, but that'll be all polished and everything. This is how it comes off the wheel. This will have to actually polish because we had to shrink with a torch to bring some of that overdevelopment back. Metal is clay, so even if you make mistakes, you can shrink it right back. It's not a problem. So this is coming along with the classes now. I'm going to do this all in aluminum. The students are going to be doing a lot of it. We've got the front end done. I showed that earlier. Here's uh, Jason's project. Jason was one of the winners of the 10-day uh, the free class program that we gave on YouTube. And he's just so gung-ho and he's local and he's built this entire Volkswagen uh, go-kart except for I think this right front fender which he's had to readjust a little bit and he's got these uh, front panels done now and we got to weld those up and the rest of this is all going to be bolted together 
there's flanges everywhere and the little uh, 632 or 832 screws will be holding the body together. We'll put some super Laguerre in a structure to it. And then we got, Jason's actually gonna make the tube frame for it and do all the mechanicals. We're gonna make it into a uh, electric go-kart for my grandson. So this is gonna be the fender line cut and we'll probably uh, double the edge to give it a nice little safe, stronger edge here. And there's a little tuning here and there that's got to be done. But Jason, again, was a total beginner. And he just did a magnificent job on it. So back to the Porsche. We've got the beater bag set up here. I've located where the, the instrument cluster bump is. And we're just going to start pounding that out a little bit. That's all stretched. There's no shrinking involved on this. We might have to do a little kick shrinking here and there, but not too much. We use my Delrin faced mallets that we make. We make a lot of tools. You can check them out in our website, www.proshaper.com. So we're going to hit this up. How much do we hit it? The flexible shape pattern tells us exactly how much we hit it. Now, if you were doing this off a wood station buck, oftentimes there wouldn't be much information there unless you added a lot of information. And um, a lot of times the procedure on a wood station buck is to make these paper patterns and the information is very incomplete and vague. So this is not incomplete and vague, it's right there. It uh, stares you in the face. It's pretty simple. All you got to do is pump that metal up to fit that. You don't go too far and you don't go not far enough. You got to find the spot where it fits nice and tight. So you got to do it in a, in a uh, measured manner. You can hit and then check, make sure that you're within the bounds. If you hit over here, that's going to be a mistake. So we got to be within those dotted lines there. That's uh, the valley of our, our, um, where the transition goes from the valley to the hill. We're going to have to stretch this edge out a bunch. That's going to have to all come up. And you can do that edge stretching right over the, the edge of the bag like this. Now, when you, I call this uh, uh, elastic or plastic stretching of the metal when you're using a mallet on it and it moves the metal really fast you could wheel this whole thing in but it'll be a lot slower um, the elastic stretching allows you to move the metal quicker and then you can smooth it with the wheel so we gotta slowly sneak up on that valley make sure we don't go over the line and we try to hit the spots that we didn't hit before. So we start out where we actually have about maybe two inches of rise there or so. And eventually we'll come down to a half an inch of rise, then a quarter of an inch, and then an eighth of an inch. And you just take your time and do it in a measured, precise way. And you won't get in any trouble. So it's pretty easy. I mean, you can sit down here, and this is a pretty heavy hammer. You can choke up on it. All you got to do is lift the hammer and then drop the hammer, and you can accelerate it a little bit. You don't have to put your whole body into it where your rib cage is, uh, you know, getting ripped up. This is just a little expenditure of energy to move that metal. Now, when you hit really hard with the hammer, uh, you do cause uh, these stretch marks. And the stretch marks, uh, if you have them in there, can be caused by hitting super hard with a sharper point. I generally use only these two points. This is for low crowns, and this is medium crown. 
and it's, you got to be careful when you use the two that you're hitting at 90 degrees. If you come down like this, you're hitting on the edge of it, which is sharp, and that, that is going to stretch the metal in, in a, uh, an excessive way, and it'll leave those little stretch marks. Same thing with this. If you're hitting with this, you want to hit it 90 degrees. If you hit at an angle like this, you're going to get these little eyebrow marks. This will make the same thing, these little eyebrow marks. Now, when you're using your beater bag, you can also use a sacrificial layer like that. That way there, uh, if you have a sharp edge somewhere or something, it's not going to bite into your expensive bag. It's just hitting that sacrificial layer. And you want to go off the edge if you want to stretch that out. Now this is the gross shaping and we're doing uh, what I call elastic or plastic shaping and then we're going to compression shape it with the English wheel after we get this area value we're creating the area value of the panel we're being guided by a flexible shape pad If you're new to the concept of flexible shape pattern, I've got a bunch of videos showing how to use them. And we do sell the correct tapes on our website also. And you use the flexible shape pattern not just by itself. By itself, it gives you a ton of information. But we also have all these gauges. And these gauges are all the subtleties of how much you need to come up. All right, for instance, Mark's got this gauge right here, and that's number 28. You have to be methodical about how you mark everything. So there's gauge number 28. And gauge number 28 goes right there. So that's one of the ones that is going to be significant in making this little hump here. So where are we? All right, that, that is showing it, it has this little curl here, which is the return also. We won't be able to put the return on there right now, but it's still got to come up. You can see that has to come up that much. Oh, actually, it's probably a little bit more than that. We put the flexible shape pattern on there. Let's see. You know, it's getting closer. You can see now it's filling right out. And we'll try to get closer to that valley line. Slowly get that valley line in. It's pretty close now. All right. Nothing is fast in uh, making panels. It's all about correct measurement interacting with the metal and making sure that your interaction was in the correct direction. And the nice thing is if you do make a mistake you can fix it. It's very very fixable. Now I don't need to bring this up fully because I want to be able to planish this out with the English wheel and let the English wheel do the last 10% or 5% and that will give it the really nice chrome plate finish that we're looking for. So, so far we're looking pretty good here. We've got to come up a little bit more. We're down to about 3 eighths of an inch or so. So we're going to pop this up a little bit more.
Now there's a bunch of different ways you can make this. Uh, Bruce made his dashboard a little bit different than, than I'm doing it. You can make this as a separate piece and then weld it in. That's okay, that'll work fine. Uh, an integral part of shaping is welding and being able to planish those welds out. So um, you can tackle stuff in a, in a global manner like this, meaning that whole panel, or you can do it piecemeal, uh, all the little features one at a time, a lot easier doing them uh, one at a time and then welding them in. But then, then the welding in implies that you've got to do all that metal finishing, and that can take time. So it's a, a trade-off. Both methods of work. Both methods are n not wrong. They're both correct. They both will yield the, the, the goal that you're looking for. So we just got to come up a little bit more. It tells us exactly how much to come up. So do a little round of hammering. And then we do our checking. Hammer, check, hammer, check. All right, we're down to yeah, half inch to a quarter of an inch or so in that range there. And we look at it and there's no anomalies or anything. You always want to make sure you don't have a big mushroom head developing somewhere. Now this panel is going this way now because our interactions with it, so we're going to have to counter that out. We'll see how we do that. Still more. So what you do is you look for the spot that needs the most. Right here I'm seeing a lot of uh, bounce right there, so I'm going to pump that some more right there. Looking good. Still a little bit more there. Right, that's filling out pretty nice. Now, let's see if we can address, uh, we'll planish this a little bit, and then also see if we can address this. We've got a bend going on in the panel now because this distortion here is causing this to want to do this roll, and we don't want that in there. So 
Uh, in order to get that out, I think we're going to have to stretch this edge a little bit, and that should come out. Uh, the flexible shape pattern has the plaster dust on it, and when you put in the, flex the flexible shape pattern on the panel, it'll leave a little dust of the, the plaster on there, so we don't want that. So we're going to take and make sure we dust it before we put it in the wheel. Now I'll put it in my big wheel here and we'll roll that edge and lift up on it and see if we can get that to straighten out a little bit. This I think has a flange that wells to the, um, the gutter system for the hood eventually. So. I'm gonna lift up on it and wheel this edge. This is all gonna be cut off anyways. See, I'm lifting as I pull it towards me to counteract that that roll that induced into it when we put that gauge hump in. Now, if there's a compound right in here and it feels like there's a strong compound, that has to be removed by stretching this edge here. So. Uh, it doesn't, the, by stretching the edge, what we're doing is bringing that edge up to this level. And we're taking out the arrangement that spontaneously happened from forming that instrument cluster hump. Now you can see why I made sure that Mark, when he cut this, he didn't cut around here because it would be hard to navigate through here. So that's getting a little bit better already. It's fighting me a little bit, so that just tells me I gotta stretch more on the edge. Now, if you stretch a ton on the edge, what will happen? I'll show you. We'll tighten this up. And the edge will go into a wave formation. You see the wave? Now, once you see that wave formation, then you go inboard and you start to work inboard a little bit and that wave formation will go away and actually bring the edge stretch inboard a little bit, meaning we're raising this edge up to this level so that there isn't any compound here anymore. We don't want a compound in there. So you have to go back and forth to the edge inboard, edge inboard, edge inboard. Less inboard than what's on the edge. The edge has got more work to happen on it than inboard from the edge. And we don't want to traverse here. We're going to have to at some point, but when we do traverse here, which has got the compound in it that we don't want, um, and we can shrink this out later with heat if we need to, but this should be easy to get with just by edge stretching. And uh, just gonna take your time until that edge pops up and meets the same height as where that bump had formed. And we're taking the curl that had formed out of it too. Now you can see we're gonna planish this out. Now if we planish this out with this wheel here, we got a major problem. What kind of problem do we have? See, we've got a really tight little radius here and we got an enormous wheel on the top here. Standard size English wheel diameter, wider though. Uh, the width won't have much of a play here on this panel. Now I can, I can wheel these bumps out, but I can't traverse into that uh, valley with this big wheel. So that's why we made these little wheels. So we made this little wheel and this will allow me to go right in that valley there. Now, oftentimes people will use a planishing hammer for this, but I have to say that every time I use a planishing hammer, I walk away from the planishing hammer a little bit disgusted because I don't get the results I always want to, to see. 
with the English wheel, I get the results I want. I'm in constant contact. I can set the pressure, any, any pressure I want. And I can wheel into tight little radiuses with this nice little machine here. Now, we've had a, a bunch of inquiries on these new little machines. And uh, we're building a run of them now. And we're building this actual, this other one over here. We're building this machine first, which we cut out on our CNC plasma cutter. And uh, this is a nice little tool for doing, I think it's about a 20 inch throat still on it. You can do big panels, you can put bigger wheels in it if you want. We got smaller wheels and uh, we're doing a run of three or four of these machines. And this one here, which is based off of my, what I call my YouTube wheel, it's the same configuration for the frame, uh, two by two stock instead of four by four. Uh, this one will be will be selling plans for this and maybe some of the hardware kits for it and uh, I think people will find this uh, Very very useful in their shop now you can make little adapters and use this by unbolting your wheels and change these little wheels But it takes a lot of time So it's, sometimes it's better just to have a couple English wheels in your shop and uh, You don't have to unbolt everything So when we planish these humps, bumps out, the lumps and the bumps, what's going to happen is um, there's actually going to be more gap now when we put the flexible shape pattern on there. And uh, we'll have to hammer it out a little bit more here. So we're just going to rough smooth this now, take an assessment. We still got to get this curve right here by stretching it some more on that edge. So there's, you know, people say there's a, a, a ton of ways to skin a cat or there's, there's hundreds of ways to skin a cat. There's generally three or four really good ways to get a job done like this. And um, the original cars were made by a small coach building firm called Wendler. And they had a full surface hardwood buck that they worked with. And what they probably did, and they, I believe they used 040,000s, because Porsche was a lightweight uh, company, just like Lotus, they stressed less weight for their for their all their race cars and and products and everything less weight means uh you know more fuel economy a smaller motor and you can get amazing results with uh, less weight so using 040 and they might have annealed it they could on at wendler they could have put this panel on over the hardwood uh full surface buck and then just hammer formed it and by doing that, they would actually be shrinking here. They'd be doing a little bit of stretching, but it would shrink right on that hardwood buck. And then they, then they planished it out a little bit too. So that's one way. And the other way would be to make this as a separate piece and weld it in. And then the way we're doing it here, where we're doing it integral, is another way. So there's three or four different ways to, to get this task done. And as long as you follow a plan, you're going to get really good results. Now, your wheels have to be polished. And as, if they're polished, you'll get a nice surface uh, shine, uh, and, and it'll look really nice. I've got a little bit of crown in this lower, lower wheel here, and this is pretty much flat on the top. But it's a nice small diameter, and it'll fit in that radius right really nicely. So... Let's see if we can get some of this roundness out here by stretching some more here. And then uh, we're probably going to have to stretch this up a little bit more. So I'm going to go a little stronger on it now. I bumped the pressure up.
All right, so that's straightening out now. And uh, we got it maybe a little bit overstretched. This is all going to be cut off here. So let's see how uh, Hump is doing. We got a little bit more to do there. So we always look for the spot that has the most here. Put that over there. I'll hit this up a little more. It's getting close. We're probably going to use a Delrin tool, a uh, little chasing tool, and we'll actually hit this down here in the valley, and um, we'll set that'll set the arrangement. Right now, it's flowing like here, and the definition of that rise isn't in there that we need. So we still got to come up a little bit more. There's the worst spot. We're down to a quarter of an inch over on here and an eighth of an inch on the other side so this side needs a little more attention. See what that says. All right, we're getting to about an eighth of an inch on the whole deal here now. Let's see if we can set this down a little bit. So if we look at the uh, the gauge number twenty eight. That's approximately where it goes right there. It's not reading right because it's got the round and we don't have the round in here. But we need a little more definition. Let's take a look at the, uh, the original piece. And if we eyeball it like that, you can see this transition zone right here where it starts to go from the foothills up. And this is a little less uh, pronounced so let's take a Delrin tool and we'll just carefully hit that in. All right I'm going to use this little Delrin chasing tool. We do make this kit and we sell them on our website. You can uh, make whatever end you want. So we'll put this on the bag and it's probably going to make a little bit of a mess but we can straighten it out with that small wheel. We're setting the arrangement right now because that has a, a sharper transition point right there. By settling that down, it'll take some of this hump out so I won't have to stretch this so much either. If I make a mistake and I, 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 you know, get a surface that doesn't look good, we can always be shrunk. It's not a problem. You can either planish it or 
shrink it back and solve your your boo boo. So I was going at it in a measured gingerly way, but now it looks like I'm going to have to hit it a little harder to get that uh, transition to happen. Maybe a bigger hammer. It's looking a lot better. Needs a little more still. Let's see what our flexible shape pattern says. Flexible shape pattern says a little bit more until it gets tight. I'm still loose over in here. I hope everybody's having a good summer and uh, in the southern hemisphere uh, you'll be looking forward to uh, spring coming up I guess. So. Tighter and tighter. We've got to bring that down though. Um, let's see. Bigger hammer. We'll get a bigger hammer. Uh. Look at that cluster, it's starting to show. The cluster bump. Getting close, okay, so right there. Always look, look for your worst spot. Sweet. All right, so I bought a, brought a bigger hammer over here. Let's see if we can uh, pound that down some. Ah, the hammer was the secret. That's uh, straightening that out pretty good. All right, so I got this way out of whack. I went a little bit too much. Again, it's going to be cut off. So all I got to do to correct that now is wheel a little bit in here and puff that back up. But I still need to hammer this down just a little bit more. We actually need to make a new gauge. We'll make a new gauge and take off this uh, negative dive here. We'll make a new gauge um, and just eliminate that. So we're going to do that next. 
So I cut the, um, the little uh, lip that goes around off because uh, that's this material here that's going to be rounding over. And the 28, we haven't put the line in yet, but there's where the 28 gauge goes. And we're pretty close right now. So it's getting, it's getting in the territory now. And what we can do is see if we can undo some of this uh, overstretch that I put in there earlier. More effective was the, uh, the Delrin tool in setting that arrangement over here than stretching this edge. So all we've got to do is stretch inboard a little bit and we'll take away that excessive uh, edge stretch, which is all being cut off anyways. It doesn't mean anything. So we're going to come in here and we can come up to that radius. We're going to form that radius with the little English wheel after. Got a little bit of it out. Let's go planish this again. Let's take our time going through here. And it's uh, so fulfilling when you see that dead flat piece of metal all of a sudden come to life as a 550 dash or a Ferrari piece or whatever you're making. Working at my grandfather's back in the 60s and the 70s, I remember he said one thing, said something to me once. He says, you know, it's a lot of work to restore a car. And if you're going to restore a car, you might as well be working on one that's worth some money. So it's the same amount of time whether the, the car is... Uh, uh, a, a valuable car or, an, or, or a more common car. So it's good to concentrate your effort on something that has a potential of uh, being sold for a little bit more than you may be expected. So these 550 Porsches in aluminum are in high demand because you the original cars, which they only made a hundred of, are now at the five million dollar mark or so when they're going up. So, and these here you can make relatively inexpensively. The Porsche 550 is a very, very complicated car though, the way they made it. You have to really gather a lot of information to make it proper. The way they designed it, they had the the inner fenders uh, welded directly right to the body and uh, it's got the clamshell in the back the inner fenders actually the rear inner fenders actually go up when you lift the clamshell up and uh, the inner structure is all this light aluminum and it's just really elaborate a beautiful design and a testimony to Erwin uh, Commenda the, the designer of the 550. You can see how this wheel works so nicely on these little little projects and we've got a whole bunch of little wheels too. We've got these little narrow wheels, we've got smaller diameter wheels, we've got the yokes to run them and everything else. We can even put, this has got a little rusty from hanging around, we'll get some humidity rust on it. But we can put a three inch top wheel on there, you can put a three inch bottom wheel if you want. So there's a lot of utility on this little English wheel. Oh, that, that's uh, planished out pretty good. Let's see if we got to hammer it some more. So 
we got that pretty close a little bit more right here you can see that and the next salient feature here is this radius that's got to go here and then we got to stretch the bejesus out of this so I think I'm gonna cut it right here for the night I think we made a good good start on the dash and uh, this has got to come down a little bit more over here and that that will uh, define that that plane r better uh, we've got to get this radius tuned a little bit more and pump this up a little more and we got to stretch that and maybe tomorrow we might be able to do part two on this I don't think I'll finish it in two parts either we've only got about probably 40 minutes or so invested in making what we've got here so far all right thanks for being so patient uh with our uh, big august hiatus so far but maybe we'll get back on track now and tomorrow hopefully we'll do part two of this and uh, please remember to give us the likes hit that little notification bell subscribe and tell all your friends and spread the word we're almost at 53,000 uh, subscribers and that's just a wonderful thing Thanks, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow.